Hi and welcome to another of the Ash PE screencasts and in this session here we're going to be looking at part two of the energy systems and more specifically we're looking at ATP PC so let's get started so first of all we've got to remember where we were um, uh, where we left it off from last time and what we were talking about was adenosine triphosphate which is the um, compound of three phosphates and the adenosine and uh, we remember that it's an it's our universal energy currency, it's our, our only usable energy, and the enzyme AT PACE is present, which creates the breaking away of the phosphate, and, and therefore giving us the exothermic reaction and the energy we need to make our muscles contract. So once we've got that exothermic reaction, we've now got adenosine diphosphate, which is really important to note, because as I said before, um, the only usable source of energy we have is adenosine triphosphate. So what we need to be able to do then is work out how we're going to move from this compound of adenosine diphosphate plus the uh, single phosphate and then move it back uh, to the adenosine triphosphate. So, and the other thing about this system is that it only lasts about two to three seconds. So what we have to do then is make sure we find another way of resynthesizing, and that's the word that we like to use, and the way that we can do that is through each one of these three different energy systems. So the lactic or the ATPPC, the anaerobic lactic acid energy system, I'm sure you've heard of lactic acid, and the aerobic energy system. Or it's also known as the glycolytic, so maybe make a note of that just in case um, that's the first time you've heard of it. So it can be called the glycolytic uh, anaerobic energy system. Most commonly used is the, the lactic acid though. All right, so where we are at the moment is we have adenosine triphosphate and we're using the system phosphate creatine to resynthesize, in other words, get us back to having three phosphates here. So the enzyme, so the important thing to note for that, uh, this one is that creatine kinase is the enzyme which breaks down the immediate fuel source of phosphate creatine. Now you may have heard of creatine, I'm sure some of you have, and um, you'll find that a lot of people who go to the gym do um, to look weights, trying to increase muscle mass, uh, will use creatine as uh, to, to boost their sources of phosphate creatine inside their bodies. All right, so what it's made up of is, is two components, is the phospho and the creatine. And where you store it is actually in your muscles. So more, more uh, specifically, it's in the uh, sarcomere. And... Um, where that, what that is, is the outer layer of the myofilaments. So with each one of your muscle fibers, the surface area around those is where we would store our phosphate creatine. So what that allows us to be able to do is release the single phosphate here that then can be resynthesized back with adenosine diphosphate. And that is known as, and this is another really important to note, is the endothermic reaction. So the replacing of the phosphate. All right, so another term that we can use with this one is a coupled reaction. Now, the reason we say that is, is because two, two things are taking place here, and it's one that's helping another. So the phospho and the creatine are obviously separating. So that's one reaction, and that is coupled to another reaction, which is the replenishment or the resynthesis of the phosphate to the adenosine diphosphate. So this one here is coupled to this reaction here. And the, the, the obviously the end result is the fact that we get the adenosine triphosphate. All right, so we have our phosphate creatine, we know where it's cited, and we know what it does. We know that it's a coupled reaction. So the next thing we need to know is that um, our previous system, our ATP system, only lasts for about two to three seconds. So with the addition of the phosphate creatine, we can now last in a high energy burst of up to about eight to 10 seconds. Now, obviously that's plenty of time to run 100 meters if you're a certain Usain Bolt, or to scoot round um, somebody if you're Anthony Watson, one of the fastest wingers in the England rugby team. Um, other suitable activities are anything that's short so you can say that the amount of energy that's expended during the clean and jerk on that one there, or obviously in a shot put or a hammer throw, something like that, that's high energy um, and it's, it's only going to last for around about 8 to 10 seconds. So what we have here is a breakdown of the what you need to understand. 
So what type of reaction is it? Is it aerobic or anaerobic? What's the chemical compound that we use for it? And the specific site. So let's go through each one of those. The type of reaction is anaerobic. In other words, it doesn't use oxygen to break, um, break the food source down. Uh, as we mentioned, all you're using is the um, phosphate creatine and uh, the enzyme. So, uh, we, and the enzyme is down here, so it's creatine kinase. So the specific site of the act, uh, reaction is the sarcoplasm. That's the very, very specific site. And the enzyme that has to be present for this to take place is creatine kinase. That then breaks the phosphate and the creatine, which is the food source or the chemical compound that's used. And what we mean by ATP yielding is how many um, elements of ATP will this actually give us? And it's this new term here, which is known as a mole. So one mole of phosphate creatine yields one ATP. So the ratio, therefore, is one to one. And then the other thing they'll usually ask you to do in an exam question and I think it's really important to be able to learn to do this, is the specific stages within that system. So, And all you do with that is you work it through. So phosphate creatine releases the phosphate. And so what you have is uh, phosphate and creatine, which is separated, plus the energy, which is the exothermic reaction. And then we have energy plus the phosphate uh, um, that joins up with the adenosine diphosphate will give you ATP. And what we do there as well, what I've done is I've just written in the, what type of reaction it was at the end. Now, the interesting thing is, for this one, there is absolutely no byproduct. But let's look at some of the problems of that. So it doesn't require O2, but well, that's fine. So it can, it can resynthesize without oxygen, means we don't have to be puffing and panting. The phosphate creatines are stored in the muscles, which is great because they're readily usable. They're right in, in the perfect position. And it can provide energy for explosive, high-intensity movements, which is excellent, which is what we need. No fatigue byproducts. Brilliant. Phosphate creatine itself can be quickly resynthesized, so recovery time can be quick. However, there are only small amounts of ATP and PC stores within the muscles. So as I mentioned before about people who potentially go into the gym are using creatine supplements to increase the amount that they have in their bodies so that they can last for longer within the certain amount of intense exercise they're doing. And again, this is actually a disadvantage. So one PC, only phosphate creatine, resynthesizes one adenosine triphosphate. And as I mentioned before, it only provides energy to resynthesize for about 8 to 10 seconds. So anything beyond that, we're going to have to start looking for a new energy system to, to help us through that event. Okay, so here's an exam question. And so explain the principles of a coupled reaction using the ATP and PC energy system as your example. So it's only a four marker, but notice what the command word is. So it's explain. And what's the principles of a coupled reaction? We did mention that earlier on. So if you need to go back over the screencast and have a look. And we will answer this question during our session. All right. Thanks very much. And uh, I'll speak to you soon.